Hello again and welcome to part four of Python from the ground up. Today we are going to be looking at loops. Okay, There's two different types of loops. Um, we're going to look at how you can repeat things in Python, how you can repeat things in Python, how you can repeat things in Python and how you can make hilarious computer science based jokes. Um, or maybe not. So loops. Um, but before we get on to that, at the end of the last video, I set you a little task to write a um, uh, a quiz game, if you like, a multiple cho multiple choice quiz game. Um, now I suggested having ten questions in it. Um, I have only bothered putting two in mind, just to give you an idea of what it should um, look like. So here is my code. Okay, so I've got this variable called ans, answer, um, except, there we go, there's the full code. So I've got my, uh, I've started off with a score, and I've set that to zero. I've asked my question, where is the Eiffel Tower, and then I've uh, listed the the choices, and then in my input line, uh, because I've already printed out the answers up, uh, the, the the options up here, although I put on the input line, is just a question mark, so it's just a prompt for input. Then this was the bit that you guys needed to come up with. So if ants equals a, remembering to have two equal signs in there because it's a comparison. If ants equals a, we print correct and we add one to the score. Otherwise, we print incorrect. And then afterwards, I've printed out what the actual answer was. You'll notice I didn't put the print um, giving you the actual answer in uh, side the if statement because well it's going to print out the answer regardless of whether you got the answer right or wrong and because you know I'd end up repeating myself otherwise I just put it down here okay so then I've got uh, my next question what letter comes after B uh, A B B D or C C and I have put the correct answer as B um, and you're probably thinking, no, C comes after B. Um, well, yes, C does come after B in the alphabet, um, but I never mentioned it was the alphabet, did I? Uh, in my list of um, uh, possible answers here, uh, I have D after B, and so there we go. And then at the at the end, it prints out your final score is, and then it converts the score to a string, and it concatenates that on. If I run this code we can see here if I just zoom in there uh, where is the Eiffel Tower uh, I think the Eiffel Tower is in Paris uh, correct the Eiffel Tower is in Paris what letter comes after B well I know the answer now because I cheated and looked at the code I'm gonna put B in there um, ah there's a bug here Uh, now sometimes I put bugs in my uh, in my code on purpose. I didn't put this bug in my code on purpose. This is a bug that I've accidentally uh, put in here. Uh, I'm going to give you a uh, a couple of seconds. If you pause the video, see if you can work out where the bug occurs, and I'll give you a clue. It's around here somewhere. Okay. So I typed in B, which should have been the correct answer, but uh, it told me it was incorrect. So uh, just pause the video. And now you've probably worked out that the problem lies here. I must have accidentally hit enter somewhere along the line, uh, which messed up some of my code. That's how it should have looked. It was searching for a B with a space afterwards, um, which obviously is not, not right. If I run the code again, uh, where is the Eiffel Tower? Should we say it's in Dakar this time? Oh, it's incorrect. Uh, what letter comes after B? If I type in B now, Ah, yeah, correct, good. And so my final score is one because I didn't score one there, and I didn't, and I scored one there. Cool, hey. Um, if that's not making much sense, you might want to just go back and rewatch um, part three of the series uh, and have another crack at those uh, if statements that are in there. Um, if you're familiar with how this syntax works, the indentations and stuff like that, that's going to be great because we're going to be seeing a lot of that in our loops now. Okay, so that's that first bit out of the way. Let's have a look at 
actually creating some loops. I'm going to create a new uh, Python file. So Alt and Insert. I'm going to select Python file. I'm going to call it Loops. Okay, here's my uh, my Loops file. Um, now there's two types of loops. There is a for loop. Uh, I'll just write these down here. Uh, and there is a while loop. While I've put there, while loop. Um, let me just bring up that. Uh, so I've got a for loop, I've got a while loop. Now a for loop uh, executes a set number of times. Okay, so if we want to loop something, say, a hundred times, we would use a for loop. A while loop keeps on executing until a condition is true. Uh, I should say until a condition is met. Uh, executes um, while a condition uh, is met. So if we don't know how many times we have to loop, but maybe we're like, well, just keep on going until the user says they don't want to carry on, you know, we would use a while loop for that. We don't know how many times it's going to run, we're going to use a while loop. If we do know how many times it's going to run, we're going to use a for loop. Okay, now the first type of loop that we are going to look at is the uh, for loop. Okay, so I've got a little flow chart here. Um, we're coming in from the top there. Have all the items in the sequence had their turn? Okay, so when I say all the items in the sequence, we're going to have a list of things that we want to go through, um, or we're going to have a range of, of, of values to work from and to. We'll have a look at how that works in code shortly. But all you need to know is that there is either going to be a number of times that we're going to run this thing or there is going to be a list of things that we are going to work through. If we've gone through all of that, i.e. we've done this loop 10 times already, okay, then we come off to the right there and we exit the loop. Otherwise, we assign an item to uh, what's called a loop variable. We execute all the statements in the loop body. Now, I will come back to that in a second once I've shown you some code in action because that will all start to make a little bit more sense then. Okay, so here we go. Let's write some code. Let's say um, I want to um, loop through the first five numbers that exist. Okay, I can do something like this. For number in one, two, three, or five. Do we agree those are the first five numbers? If you said no, give yourself a pat on the back because we should really have started from zero. Okay, so here is our command that creates the loop. Okay, and for the purposes of this, we are just going to print our number. Okay, so let's have a look at what's going on here. And I will just bring up that flow chart. Have all the items in the sequence had their turn? Okay, well, here is our sequence. Not one, two, three, four. When we first go into the loop, none of those items have had their turn. So the answer there is no. So let's go back to our flow chart. The answer is no. We're going to assign the next item to the loop variable. Okay, I'm going to assign the next item to the loop variable. This here is the loop variable. I've called it number. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it Shirley if you want, but you should make sure that you have sensible variable names. Okay, so the first time that we loop through, the first item in the list will be assigned to this temporary variable. Okay, it essentially creates this variable called number and it assigns it the value zero. So now when we go down here, it says print number. Well, we've just assigned the value zero to number, so that should print out zero. Okay. Notice how we've got that indentation at the start there. We've got this colon at the end of the line. That's exactly the same way that the code blocks in the if statements are laid out. Okay. So once we've done that, if it was an if statement, we just move on to the next line. But this is a loop, so we go back up to the top. Okay, let's go back to that flow chart. Have all the items in the sequence had their turn? Well, no, they haven't. We've only done the first one. So what do we have to do? Assign the next item to the loop variable. So this next item here, the number one, then gets assigned to our value number here. So we're going to print out one. 
Okay, we loop through again. Have all the items been assigned? No, they haven't. The next item is two. That gets assigned to number and then is printed out and so on and so forth. When I run this code now, you can see there is my output. Okay, now I could have another line. Maybe I want to print uh, number times two. Okay, because remember, the value that's stored in that variable you know, it's just it's just a number at this point, either naught, one, two, three, or four. Okay, so when I run that, you can see here we run this line and then this line before we loop back up to the top because they are both indented. Okay, so the first time through, number is assigned the value zero. We print out zero. Then we print out zero times two. Well, zero times two is zero, so we print out another zero. Now we loop back to the top. One gets assigned to number. Okay, so we print out number, which is 1. We then print out number times 2. Well, 1 times 2 is 2. So we print out 1 and then 2 before we loop back up to the top. 2 gets assigned, we print out 2 and then 4. There it is. 3 gets assigned, we print out uh, 3 and then 6. Uh, 4 gets assigned, we print out 4 and then 8. Okay. Um, At the end, I'm going to print out done. You'll notice I haven't indented this. So when I run it, when is that going to print it out? If you answered right at the very end and not a moment before, you would be correct. Look, here's all our output. We print out all of these numbers and then we print out done at the end. We do not get to this point until we've gone through that entire list there. Okay. Now. Obviously, if we've got a small list like this, it's easy to, to type out that, that list. But if we want to, say, do something a thousand times, we don't want to write out 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to a thousand. That's going to take forever. So we are going to use a command called range. Okay, I'm going to leave that code up there. I'm going to create a new loop, which is going to do exactly the same thing as this one. Okay, I'm going to have for number in and instead of having this list I'm going to say range 5 print number print number times 2 and then um, at the end we are going to print done again okay so the output from this should be exactly identical to the output from the first loop. In fact, I am going to comment out this first loop. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna delete the code. I'm gonna keep it there. But I'm gonna. Um, if you put a hash symbol in front of a line of code, uh, the in, uh, interpreter will ignore it. Now in PyCharm, there's a quick way of doing that. You highlight all of the code that you want, and then you press uh, Control and forward slash. Okay. I'll write that down here. Control and forward slash. Okay, and if you want to uncomment it again, control and forward slash will do that for you as well. Okay, so now I've just got this one loop here, which is instead of having our list here, it's going to print out, um, well, it's going to use this range command. Let's just run that. You can see the output is identical. Okay, what range does is it generates a list of numbers starting from zero and going up to but not including the number that you specify okay so if I want um, my range from go to to go from zero to 100 I would put what in the brackets here three two one I would put 101 in there okay when I print this out now Boom. Okay, we go all the way up to a hundred. I zoom in there. So we start all the way down here, la 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 la, and we're going all the way down. There we go. The last one is one hundred. If I just put a hundred in there, it's only going to go up to ninety-nine. Okay, there we go. All right. So far, so good. Right now you're probably thinking well okay that's useful but what if I don't want to start at zero what if I want to start at say 50 
uh, and then go from 50 to 75. Okay, well, you can do that. So instead of just putting one number in the brackets here, you put two different numbers separated by a comma. The first number is the number that you start at. The second number is the number that you want to end. But remember, it doesn't actually include that one. So if I want to go from 50 to 75, I would have to put 50, 76 in. The very first number is going to be 50. The very last number is going to be 75 because we don't include that upper bound. OK, so I run this now. You can see the start of my input, I start at 50. OK, and the end of my input, I am starting, uh, sorry, I am ending at 75. OK, so with the range, you can either start at zero uh, and end at uh, the number just before the one that you specify, or you can start at a specific number and end at the, um, uh, the same point. You can also specify how much you want to go up each time. So let's say I want to start at 50. I want to end at 100, but I want to only put every fourth number down. OK, so I'm going to say 50, 54, 58, 62, and so on. OK, all the way up to 100. So what is my upper bound going to be? That's right, 101. OK, and I now specify how much I want to go up each time. So I'm just going to put 4. That will step it up four times each time. When I run my loop now, you can see I start at 50. So 50 gets assigned to the number, and then 50 gets multiplied by 2. So I've got 50 and then 100. We go all the way back to the top. The next number is not 51, because we're going up four each time. So the next number is 54. And then 58, 62, all the way up. Now you'll notice it ends at 98, even though I put 101 in there. Okay, that's because if we're going up 4 every time, 98, we can't go up by 4 because that will take us past that upper bound there. Okay, so if you're going up in certain steps, then, um, you know you have to uh, realize it's going to stop at the last number which is below your upper bound. Okay, one more thing that I wanted to show you on this for loop uh, and the range command. We can do something like this. Let's say I want to start at 100 but I want to end at 0. Okay, I'm going to put minus 1 in there because if you think about it, if we start at 100 and we're going backwards, we still have to go one past the last thing that we want to put in there. So I'm going to put minus 1 in there. And instead of 4 here, if I want it to count down, what am I going to put in there as my step each time? 3, 2, 1. I am going to put minus 1 in there. OK, I'll run this now. Boom. We start off at 100, and every time we are going down by 1. OK, so if you need to count backwards, you specify the start, you specify the end, and you specify how much you are stepping. OK, so little mission for you here. I want you to write a loop which will, okay, I want you to write a program which is going to ask the user which times table do they want to know, okay? They are going to type in a number between uh, 1 and 10, or I don't know, any, any number, they can type in any number, right? And what I want you to do is write a for loop which prints out uh, the first 10 numbers in that times table. So if I enter the number 5, if it says to me, hey, what, what times table do you want? And I enter the number 5, it will print out 1 times 5 equals 5, 2 times 5 equals 10, 3 times 5 equals um, 15, and so on and so forth. Okay, so pause the video and then come back to it once you've written that program. I'm just going to take a sip of coffee and then I will write out the answer. I should say as well, this is obviously in my Power Rangers mug. <sighs> okay. So, um, uh, what times table 
do you want? Okay, you'll notice I have converted the input into an integer. Okay, so I'm going to say for i in range 10, i is just the temporary variable that I'm using. i is a fairly standard variable to use when you are uh, creating for loops. But if you've used if you've used a different variable name, that's fine. As long as it's different from this one, that should be all right. Okay. So we've typed in their number, and we are going to print out a new line. We're going to say uh, print um, one times. Uh, oh, what have I done wrong? I've forgotten quote marks. One times, and then obviously I need to convert their number to a string and include that. Now, the cool thing here is I can include the calculation in my print command. Okay, you might have worked it out separately and uh, you know had a variable. That's fine as well. Okay, I'm just showing you how I would do it here. Uh, so we are going to do i times number. Okay, because remember i is the number that we're counting up. We're gonna sorry, we don't want one times. We are going to have i times. So we're gonna say i, whatever i is, to start off with it's going to be 0, so it's going to say 0 times whatever number I type in equals, and then we're going to multiply the number. And it's going to do that every single time, 10 times, and then it's going to uh, exit. I'm going to leave a command saying print, thank you for uh, your cooperation. Good night. Okay. Uh, and bonus prizes for anyone that can tell me what movie that's a reference of. So let me just run that code here. Uh, what times table do we want? Let's say we want the, I don't know, the 12 times table. Should we have the 12 times table? Boom! Here we go, our 12 times table. In fact, I'm just going to uh, move that up so we can see the whole thing. 0 times 12 equals 0. 1 times 12 equals 12. 2 times 12 equals 24. 3 times 12 equals 36. And so on and so forth, all the way down there. Now notice we haven't got 10 times 12 because obviously I started at 0 and it's gone up to 9. If I wanted to start at 1 and go include in the 10 times table, I'd have to change that. So let's say I want the 16 times table. There we go. Okay, straightforward, right? Four loops. Okay, uh, they are very, very useful, um, but only if you know exactly how many times you are going to um, going to loop. Okay, um, right. Uh, I've just seen the time. This is uh, it, we've gone on for nearly half an hour uh, on 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 loops. Um, and we haven't quite got to while loops. So what I'm going to do is I am going to end this video now um, and then the next video, uh, which will be video, I don't know, 4A or 4B, uh, we will look at while loops. Okay, so um, a little bit of practice with for loops. What you could do is um, have a... Um, You could ask the user how many times they want to flip a coin, okay, and then get them to guess how many times it will come up heads. Um, you will have to investigate how to randomly uh, choose a number. We will look at that in a couple of videos' time, okay. But for now, go back, just practice some of those times tables, um, and I shall see you shortly.